I preached on the Sunday after the election in 2016. Actually, on what was the narrative lectionary text for this morning, Jonah and the Whale. I clearly departed from that scripture this morning, but eight years ago, I preached about how I wanted that whale. I wanted something to just swallow me up and give me a dark, quiet place to rage and cry and eventually come around to prayer. I'm going to take us in a different direction today. But know that whatever you're feeling in this space, whether it is rage or grief or despair or hope or motivation, I honor it. And if you feel like you need a whale to swallow you up, I get it. My job as a pastor this morning is not to be partisan. I firmly believe in the Baptist principle of religious freedom, which entails a separation between church and state. But that does not mean that I will be apolitical. Those two often get conflated, partisan and political, but they're not the same thing. My job is not to be partisan, not this morning or any morning. Yet I believe that as a pastor and as a Christian, my job is political. When I say political, I'm thinking of the root meaning of the word. It comes from the Greek, politica, which means the affairs of the cities or the affairs of the people. Political. The affairs of the people. Political, meaning the way that we make our collective decisions. Political, meaning the way that we think about distribution of resources. Political, meaning how we interact with power and distribute power. My job as a pastor and as a Christian is political because Jesus was political. Not partisan, political. And his ministry has political implications. If you're skeptical about that, I invite you to consider the language that Jesus himself uses. Starting with the word gospel. We use that word a lot don't we? We read the Gospels. We follow the Gospel. We are called to preach the Gospel and to live the Gospel. Yet the term Gospel did not originate with Jesus or with Christianity. The term was used within the Roman Empire to denote a royal proclamation. A Gospel heralded things like a royal birth or a military victory. As theologian Zach Lambert puts it, most of the time, Caesar's gospel proclamations meant that yet another nation had been defeated by Rome and another group of people had been enslaved to empire. How about another common Christian phrase? We've already used it at least once this morning. The kingdom of God. Jesus chose the word kingdom. He could have chosen other words. Community, family, household. But he chose to say the kingdom of God. Which is a political term. 
Jesus intentionally uses political language that invites his listeners to compare God's gospel and God's kingdom with the gospels and kingdoms with which they are most familiar. And we're invited to do the same. Now, we don't have a monarchy in the United States. That's not our political system. So if it helps, imagine Jesus using terminology like, as the Reverend Cody Sanders puts it, the nation state of God or the country of God. Jesus' ministry was and is political, and it relates to the politics of our time and our system in the same way that it did then. So, now that we've established that, what is the kingdom of God like? What is the country of God like? What is the states of God like? We're told in today's text that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Did anyone else do vacation Bible school as a kid? Yeah? Okay. Um, How many of you had a vacation Bible school lesson where you got to look at a mustard seed? I I went to a lot of vacation Bible school, and I held a lot of mustard seeds. They're really tiny. They're really tiny. You have to sort of squint to see them. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. It might not initially seem flashy or exciting. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Some of its foundational work takes place in the darkness. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. It starts so small, but it grows steadily over time. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, and not just any mustard seed. Mustard seeds usually grow into shrubs, big shrubs, yes, but shrubs. Yet this mustard seed of Jesus, it gets even bigger. It grows into a tree. They don't usually do that. So the kingdom of God isn't just like a mustard seed. It's a surprising mustard seed, an ordinary speck that grows so big you can't miss it. The kingdom of God is like a surprising mustard seed that grows into a tree that provides a home for all of the birds. All of the birds, no matter where the bird comes from or the color of the bird, what the bird looks like or who the bird loves, all of the birds. This isn't the only mustard seed text in the gospel. In the same way that Jesus uses political terms familiar to his audience, he also uses agricultural terms common to the area. In Luke chapter 17, Jesus says to his disciples, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. Jesus is again using this image of the mustard seed to say even the littlest bit of faith can do amazing things. It's like the story we heard from Second Kings today about the widow and the oil. This vulnerable woman comes up to the prophet Elisha and says, the creditors are coming to take everything I have. I think that's something that people can resonate with 
today as well. The creditors are coming to take everything I have. She says, even my children will be sold into debtors' slavery. Please help me. Elisha responds by asking her what she has in the house, and the widow answers only a little bit of oil. Elisha says, then go, gather from your neighbors as many jars as they can spare and begin to pour your little bit of oil into those jars. The widow probably thought, what am I going to do with all of those jars? I just told you I only have a little bit of oil. But when she begins to do as the prophet instructs, the oil somehow keeps pouring out and pouring out and pouring out. It fills all of the jars until there are no more left to fill. The story of the mustard seed and the story of the oil and so many other stories in scripture tell us that with God, And with our neighbors, a little bit is enough. More than that, a little bit is abundant. With God and with one another, a little bit is more than enough. This morning... Some of us may only have a mustard seed of faith. Maybe half a mustard seed. The teeniest, tiniest little bit because we are scared and anxious of what we see in the world around us. We are disturbed by the misogyny, transphobia, homophobia, racism, lies, and violence handed a seat of power. And doing it in the name of Jesus. But here is the good news. And there is good news. That teeny tiny bit of faith, it's more than enough. Now, I felt it was important that I... I'm not the only person you hear this morning. The power of church is not me, it's not the pastor, it's not any one of us, right? The power of church is God working through all of us together. So I'm going to ask you to help me finish the sermon. Here's how. When you came in the door, you received a round piece of paper. Maybe you've been looking at it this whole time, wondering why do I have this circle? Here's why. This is your mustard seed. They are bigger than actual mustard seeds, but this is your mustard seed. And I want you to write one little thing on your mustard seed. Just one little thing that gives you faith, or one little sign that the kingdom of God is among us. And then I want you to bring it up here where we will plant them in our soil. And if you're online, I'd like you to put it in the chat and I'll write it on a mustard seed for you. Now I'll go first. My mustard seed says, The Peace of Wild Things. That's a poem by Wendell Berry, but... I'm speaking of the peace that being out in nature has brought me. Just to look at the lake, to look at the trees, to feel the wind on my face, that's my mustard seed. Now as we write and plant our mustard seeds, we're going to listen to a song. It's called The Kingdom of Jesus by the group The Porter's Gate. You'll hear it in a moment, but here are some of the lyrics. To what shall we compare the kingdom of Jesus if not a seed? It's small, it's sown, it's tended and grown, and it's sturdying you and me. Its branches never break, and its fruit never withers. 
His kingdom is not of this world or of any. No kingdom whose ruler's face is on a penny. He comes to make all things bright and put a new wine in us. He's chosen the small things to outlast the great, the meek and the merciful to shine through the hate, though it seems some days that hell and its gates are prevailing. Oh, say, can you see the kingdom within us is the kingdom of Jesus. Let's listen and bring our seeds forward when you're ready. is going to keep writing the ones of our friends on Zoom, but I want to read these aloud. Start with this one. The joy of community and the genuine glee of my dogs when I walk in the door. The people who have loved me into being, God's breath on the leaves too. The ability of people to still show love to one another in so many ways, romantic love, familial love, people holding space for each other, people checking on each other. Family, the peace and love of my family, the love of Jesus, we are here. Family, the amazing power of nature to soothe the soul, resilient to faith and trust. My beautiful garden, the perennials return each year. It's peaceful there. God's hand is there. Sharing despair with others brings hope and light, fellowship and love. The resolve that people of peace have to resist evil. The care of friends, the efforts of those who just keep fighting. The grass is still green. Faithful people, God's got this. The kindness of strangers, Jeremiah 29, 11, and loved ones, hope, the blessing of family and friends, stained glass windows, love, preaching flowers, animals, and nature, kindness from strangers, loyal and steadfast friends, people who care, family, church music, good health. A mustard seed, my friends. Do you see it? It's more than enough. Amen.